my name is Eincrow, and I will be your guide through the world of Dead Space 2 in stereoscopic 3D. Now, put on your 3D glasses and prepare to leave this flat space station behind. You have now entered the S3D Gamer Zone. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Dead Space 2 is an antique game and a questionable selection for review. But come on, do not ever forget what we do here at S3DGZ. We infuse new life into any game. Wait a minute. We infuse new life into any game, young or old, by literally taking it to a new dimension. This is all sounding too familiar, isn't it? Yes, indeed. We are returning to see Isaac Clarke's continuing trials and tribulations three years after the events of the first game. For me, though, it's only been three months since I reviewed Dead Space, so forgive my feelings of deja vu. Uh, yeah, and a return to the decrepit Ishimura didn't exactly help to stave off those feelings. So, yes, I felt at home blasting off into Dead Space 2, comfortable enough to do my first playthrough on Zealot, the highest difficulty level that was available to me. It wasn't so much because I think I'm a fantastic Dead Space player. Well, maybe that was a bit of it, but mostly because I was hoping to avoid the problem I had in the first game of too many resources lying on the ground. So much deja vu! You feel like you're going insane too, Isaac? I feel your pain, brother. Okay, back to the items. Zealot difficulty claims that there are fewer health and ammo drops, and this is definitely true, for ammo at least. Ammo loot only had half the number it usually would, so ammunition usually felt pretty tight, and I liked that. Sections where there were zillions of necromorphs and I was running low on ammo for all of my weapons gave me the sense of tension I was hoping for. As for health packs, well, Take a look at how many I had in storage at the end of the game. Holy crap, that is a lot. Before I move on from complaining about items, I have to mention the DLC that comes embedded with the Steam version of the game. Look at all this stuff that's available at the beginning of the game for free. Bad, 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 bad! PC Gaming Wiki has info about an EXE you can use to run the game without these items in the store, but I had problems with it, so I ended up just ignoring all of the free weapons and rigs for the entire game. I can still hear it in my mind, like a song now. An overabundance of loot continued to be a bit of an issue for me, but there are many changes worth talking about. Yeah, and speaking of talking, Isaac has a voice now. Listen to me, man. <laughs> matter. Listen to me, man. His dulcet tones make the game's story much easier to follow, despite it being far less interesting than that of the first game. Isaac's encounter with the Marker aboard the Ishimura in the first game implanted important knowledge within him about how to build another Marker. He cannot remember anything of the three years since the Ishimura incident, but apparently he was building a gigantic marker that would bring on the final convergence. Oh my god. I built that. And this is not the type of convergence we 3D gamers are familiar with. What? What are they doing? They're all coming to the marker. Convergence is at hand. The Church of Unitology foretells that it will be humanity's ultimate coming together into one being. I don't think I even need to mention that the reality isn't quite so kumbaya-ish. <laughs> Dead Space 2 takes place on the Sprawl, an enormous space station surrounding the remains of Titan. The largest moon of Saturn was the site of the first planet-cracking mining operation. The Sprawl is an ideal location, location for this type of game and did space- ah! uh, a, a, lar a large space station is a pretty good place for a survival horror game, and the world design runs a huge number of varied environments. It starts out in an insane asylum, and then moves to living quarters and shopping strips. Eventually, Isaac travels back to the Ishimura, revisiting familiar locations that were undergoing renovation before the latest Necromorph outbreak. Fall back to the market chamber! We have to seal it up! Despite the sprawl once being a highly populated space platform, Isaac only encounters a few living people. He runs into a pilot named Ellie as she fearlessly fights off waves upon waves of Necromorphs. 
Yes, unfortunately, she's a typical badass gal who doesn't break down even after losing an eye. These types of ridiculously tough female characters bore the hell out of me, but even so, I was glad to hear her over the Riglink comm system. It gets a bit lonely with only hostile necros to keep me company. Holy shit, Isaac! Look out! It's headed for you! So, that pretty much explains the setting of the game, which I enjoyed the hell out of. The events and story of the game, eh, not so much, but the art design was extremely well done. Also well played is the addition of set piece sections where Isaac takes a break from the usual plotting survival horroring and does some sweet stunts. I saw some complaints on forums that Dead Space 2 had too much actioning and not enough survival horroring. Absolutely frickin' ridiculous if you ask me. The set pieces were few and far between, and they always fit perfectly into the flow of Isaac's journey. The atmosphere of Dead Space 2 was just as expertly accomplished as the first game, with long sections of uneventful exploring punctuated by pissed off necros leaping out of grates. All of the monsters from the first game return, with just as many new ones. The new necros vomit, and they explode, and they try to hug you, and they also rush at you with all of the quickness. My favorite one was also the one I dreaded the most. I don't know what they're called, but I call them Ninja Necros. These devious bastards use cover like Marcus Phoenix sticking their heads out just to see where I'm at. Then, they rush at me at full speed, letting loose a terrifying scream. They hit and they run bounding over boxes to then reset and prepare for another attack. I hated fighting these, but I loved the feeling when the horror battle was over. The new Necros are generally very quick, but fortunately, Isaac no longer moves like a small tank and has the agility necessary to deal with them. All right now, here's my favorite part of the review, the stereoscopic experience. The first thing that needs to be said is that the game is a complete disaster with the 3D Vision stereo drivers. NVIDIA rated the game not recommended, and what a massive shame that is for such an immersive game. Once again, Dead Space 2's UI is entirely integrated into the game world and as such are created as objects in 3D space. Lucky for us that Helix was on the case and he fixed Dead Space 2 using his own Helix mod. Gotta tell the truth though, it's a slightly less perfect job than Dead Space 1. Some issues remain, such as the motion blur on fast necros, and a halo effect around Isaac anytime he re-enters an airlock, but these problems are very much intermittent. The worst remaining anomaly was one room early in the game that was cast with a thick fog. Right, we won't look at that any longer than necessary. Another problem worthy of mention was the final boss battle. All of the enemies appeared at the wrong depth, making it very confusing to look at in S3D. I straight up disabled 3D for this fight, which, by the way, was an absolutely awful battle. Even in 2D, it was difficult to feel in control of my surroundings, and the fast baby surrounded me and killed me over and over. Afterwards, though, the awesome scene where Isaac blasts off to the gunship redeemed the end of the game for me. And that reminds me of another of Isaac's new abilities. He can now freely spacewalk in zero-g areas, which caused me no motion sickness like in the first game where he could only leap from surface to surface. Many of these areas are enormous and look very, very impressive in S3D. The artist's liberal use of volumetric fog was one of my favorite visual features to see in S3D.
and yet another spectacular experience I got that you will only find when playing in S3D was as the fast necros rushed at me, actually feeling like they were really getting closer to me. It is a tense moment when I need to line up a perfect shot to his arm, and then I can use Kinesis on the severed arm to throw it back at him for massive damage. The ability to use the environment to help you fight is greatly improved from the first game and helped me conserve ammo that was all too precious on Zealot difficulty. Though it can be kind of awkward when a supposedly vicious Necro is killed by lightly tossing his own leg back at him. Now that's just silly. Oh yeah, and speaking of light, there are a lot of high contrast scenarios in this game, especially Isaac's health and stasis energy indicators on his back. This is just begging for crosstalk, but lowering the contrast on your display will help reduce it, so try that out if you're having problems. I think I'm ready to give my final scores now, but first I want to express my sincere hope that I can continue my reviews of the Dead Space series in stereoscopic 3D. Whether that means that Visceral Games makes an effort to have Dead Space 3 work, or that Helix spends countless hours laboring to fix it, I care not. This series gains more from being displayed in stereoscopic 3D than most games, so I hope to be back in 2013 with a Dead Space 3 review. Okay, let's finish this off and reveal the scores. I believe that Dead Space 2 was a step forward for the series in pretty much every way except the story. The new multiplayer mode didn't interest me very much, but it reminded me of my excitement for Dead Space 3's co-op. <laughs> Dead Space 3 must be Dead Space S3D. I command it! But for now, Dead Space 2 earns an 8 for being a wonderful third-person survival horror game. As for the stereoscopic 3D experience, don't even bother wasting your time thinking I'd give this bad boy anything other than a 10 out of mother freaking 10. I know it sounds like I give out these perfect scores a lot, but the staff of S3DGZ is committed to bringing you the best examples of stereoscopic 3D PC gaming above all else. But don't you worry, I am sure I will get to blast the heads off of bad 3D games in the future. My name is Iron Crow, and I have been your S3D Gamer Zone guide through Dead Space 2. Join us for further stereoscopic 3D gaming excursions anytime at www.s3dgamerzone.com. Great S3D videos are the name of the game here, and we would appreciate hearing about your experience watching this presentation. Let us know if it was comfortable or if you had problems, and tell us what stereoscopic viewing method you used. Thank you for watching.